Hey guys, I am Folygon, and we're going to be doing some real-time sculpting in this video in ZBrush. Uh, so, uh, I just got off of Sculptober here, and ended up having a lot kind of go on in the past month. For those that are unfamiliar with Sculptober, for the entire month of October, it's a challenge where you sculpt every single day. Similar to, you know, Inktober, all those kind of Tober challenges, right? There's a bunch of them. Uh, so I just got done with that, an entire month of sculpting every single day, a new uh, character or kind of piece every single day. Most of them I did characters. I think maybe one or two I did not. I think I did a sword and uh, Magnemite maybe might not be considered a character. It's a Pokemon, so maybe, maybe so. Uh, but yes, lots of fun there. So yeah, that was a, a kind of a big and challenging month for me in terms of just uh, time management throughout the month of October. Uh, ton, ton of fun though, I really enjoyed uh, getting to participate in that. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do every single day. I was, here we are at the end of it. I would just like to quickly congratulate everybody else that participated, especially those that ended up going all the way to the end, doing all 31 days. It was uh, not easy, I, I know myself. Um, but those that just kind of participated and maybe even only did one day, I want to congratulate you as well. Just participating is uh, kind of a huge feat. I like to say that even doing a little is a lot. And it, maybe it, for a lot of people, I think it was kind of your first time ever sculpting. So um, for those people, yeah, definitely congratulations on jumping in and welcome to the sculpting family. Very happy to have you. If you are new around here, consider clicking that subscribe button. I think um, <laughs> last time I checked, I think it's like uh, 75 or 80% of people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you are not subscribed, definitely click that subscribe button. It definitely helps out the channel. It helps out me a lot. I definitely appreciate you guys coming in and commenting and saying nice things. And if you want to be able to more easily hear about future videos, get notifications for those, uh, subscribing and clicking the little bell thingy is going to be the way to do that. So this one here is going to be uh, very experimental. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm just kind of blocking out these major shapes for the head, kind of taking my time, uh, trying to make something not really uh, any particular direction right now. Uh, I have some ideas with this, some direction that I want to head, and we'll talk about that more as we kind of uh, get a little bit closer to some kind of um, more refined result. But for now, this entire early process is just about kind of blocking out, getting some planes down, and figuring out uh, these landmarks. Because really, you can't start creating a face or, or anything until you kind of work on those kind of really early beginning stages. So during this part of the process, I mean, it looks really awkward, right? But what I'm doing here is actually the exact same process that a traditional sculptor would use. Uh, kind of just, you know, figuring out these most basic shapes. A lot of techniques that I have learned here for digital sculpting came from watching traditional sculptors. Uh, a lot of that kind of technique and information is very transferable and it's been very helpful in my um, my workflow to just kind of figure out um, how things were done traditionally beforehand and see if maybe there's a better way to do that in digital. Uh, I think you would be surprised by how similar the process is between the two. Obviously, there's a lot more stuff in digital in terms of just tools alone, uh, including things like symmetry, right? Very, um, very useful tool there to kind of speed up your workflow. Uh, let's grab an ear plop that on. Let's see, where's my ear? Let's just do a realistic ear for now. Or a more realistic ear than my tune style ear that I have. And I'll just get that into a basic place. I do not like sculpting ears. I've sculpted so many ears. I'm just done sculpting ears. So I made a brush for it. That's not true. Um, I, I think that whenever you can get more practice in for something, uh, the better. Let's scale that up a little bit. Something like that. Whoa, those are some big ears. Let's scale that back down a little. Rotate out to roughly a 45. Honestly, I need to redo these ears because I don't. There's some stuff about them that I don't like. Some stuff that I pretty much always change on on each insert. 
Um, so I need to kind of flatten that back there. We'll, we'll kind of work with those a little bit later. I mainly just wanted something on my surface. So let's go back to um, what I was talking about before, which I vaguely uh, remember here. Let's see, let's get some lips. It's kind of hard to talk and sculpt at the same time. So you'll have to forgive me if I jump around a lot in terms of my thought process while we're working here. So like I was saying, there are a lot of tools uh, in ZBrush that wouldn't exist in traditional, kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't with those is, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of kind of work, I guess, to put it frankly. I think a lot of people come into ZBrush and they see it as this piece of software and it's going to be like learning any other piece of software, right? You come in here, and you're going to learn how to use the user interface. You're going to learn how to add a subdivision level and more geometry to your model. Oh, wow, half a million polys, right? So you're like learning all this stuff. You feel like you're going to get to a place where you can, you know, once you learn the software, just hop in here and sculpt whatever you want. And the, the truth is that um, the, the user interface is definitely kind of a, a big hump to get over in terms of just learning all the tools and everything in here. But after that happens, the really hard part um, kind of kind of starts when you realize that you need to learn how to sculpt, because <laughs> um, you know the software is not going to sculpt for you. It will kind of do some really nice things for you in terms of like symmetry. Wow, that's really nice, right? Man, this thing is ugly. <laughs> but um, it's not it right. It, hey, there's a perfect example. It's not going to make things look nice for you. Um, <laughs> it's very it's very ugly right now. I promise it'll look better later. If you are new around here and you're coming in, you're like, wow, this guy sucks. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, everything kind of looks a little bit derpy in the beginning. I know this nose is nasty. I know those lips are nasty. I know a lot of this is nasty. But I promise, just give it some time. It will shape up. Really, during this process, you can't be concerned with how things are looking in terms of like how nice they're looking. That is not the purpose of this stage. The purpose of this super early stage is to figure out where everything uh, needs to be on your uh, on your surface. Um, well, including the larger form for your surface, figuring out the shapes there. So right now, I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I want the mouth. I know it barely looks like a mouth, and there's a lot of uh, weird stuff going on here. I kind of want to experiment with the inflate brush a little bit more. But the kind of process here that I'm, I'm, I'm not super worried about things looking really janky. I'm just kind of more so worried about um, kind of the larger uh, appeal here. Uh, and what I mean by that is essentially if I were to move this back like super, super far or really small, or maybe if you like ever so slightly cross your eyes and kind of blur your vision a little bit, that is what I'm kind of focusing on here in the early stage, as well as silhouette. Silhouette is, uh, in my opinion, kind of the most important thing of sculpture. Uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than just silhouette, right? If, if there weren't or if there wasn't, uh, we would just be 2D artists. But um, there is, there is quite a bit that goes into it. Yeah, I, I want this to be um, nice, but right now I can kind of forego thinking about the niceties of later on down the road and just kind of focus on uh, making as many big, quick changes as possible. While I'm talking though, that's a, a little bit tough to do. So uh, we'll, we'll try to continue on here really quick. Get as much done as we can. Let's go ahead and get a, a couple other pieces in here, like some eyes and a neck. We'll do that next. Move our cylinder down here. Get this fat neck into place. Now this is going to be a feminine uh, or more feminine face, I think, based on kind of the direction I want to take this, but at least right now. Uh, the difference in terms of planed out shapes or blocked out major forms for the head uh, is actually uh, going to be exactly the same, whether I'm doing a, a more masculine or feminine face. It doesn't really matter at this stage. Uh, later on, it will matter uh, quite a bit more um, after I start moving into kind of refinement, because that's when uh, you're going to start getting into some softer planes, typically for a more feminine face. Not always the case, right? Uh, so that would mean 
uh, me taking things like this hard plane change that I have for the front or side plane of the face and starting to soften and blend between those. But if you've ever struggled to make a soft or round face or a softer round form, that is your problem, that you're not taking the time to really define your plane changes. You need to do that first before you start creating you know, a rounded or softer form. If you don't do that, you are going to get into a world of trouble later on. Uh, it's going to be very hard, like your shapes are going to be all over the place and you won't be able to control them or even know exactly why or what's going on. You're going to have stuff like this. I mean, it's going to be, you know, super messy, super uncontrolled. You need to define those planes first. Uh, for me, I use pinch brushes, trim brushes, all sorts of fun stuff. And we can maybe, you know, talk about tools more uh, in future videos. I, I talk about tools a lot and I, I like to keep things a little bit more agnostic in terms of um, software so that um, we can just kind of focus on the art and what's important there. Me sitting here saying, you know, I'll push this key and this key next. I, mean, I, can't, I can't say every single uh, keystroke and I don't want to clog up the, the screen too much here with any plugins or anything that show keystrokes or anything like that. I like to just kind of focus here on the art as much as possible. I'm not really uh, liking some of the shapes here in the nose. And the resolution is just too high for me to be able to manipulate this, so I'm going to lower the resolution. All right, let's make some larger changes here to the general shape of the brow. Wrapping around. Liking the general angle there. Let's check out that nose, maybe a bit more flat. Uh, our face is a bit uh, downturned, which is something that just kind of happens while I'm sculpting faces naturally. See that? Very quick rotation there, but um, it's kind of something that naturally happens. I also, because I work with a lot of students through my course, I pick up on a lot of trends that, that people kind of, or, or um, similar habits or mistakes that people often make. And it's things that I've noticed myself do and things that I've seen other artists do. And it's really interesting to see it. it. It's almost like this universal kind of set of things that people often do. And not everybody does all of them. And, you know, um, you know, there's always, uh, you know, different skill levels within that. But it's just so funny to see so many people make the same mistakes so often. It's a bit, it's just, it's just interesting, I guess. Uh, like for for instance, one really common one that people or that sculptors make specifically is that while sculpting, people will make heads and hands too small. Typically, um, why that is, I, I honestly could not tell you. I have some ideas as to why that is, but it's just something that happens. So I actually, while sculpting, if I'm doing a full figure, a full character, I will make my head a little bit larger than I think it needs to be. Uh, initially and then later on if I need to scale or make changes that's fine but at least starting out uh, with that direction in mind of having it a bit larger well then later on I can uh, I can make that a bit you know smaller if I need to but typically what happens is I've made it a little bit larger in the beginning and by the time I'm getting close to being done with it it just kind of naturally falls into a place where it's the correct size. I, like I said, I have some ideas as to why that's happening. I think it's often because you're carving into a face more than a uh, building form up. So kind of like, like look here, I, I could pull this out. I don't want it to be wider though. I, I want this to kind of shrink in, get a bit more, um, a bit more close to parallel, which typically we want to avoid. We can, you know, talk about that fundamental a little bit more later, but, um, you know, we're kind of shrinking the head in on itself a little bit as I continue to sculpt. Uh, so I think that's mainly, uh, you know, one of the main reasons why that kind of heads in that direction. Heads in that direction. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> um, another is that uh, we kind of zoom in and focus and work on our face a little bit. Um, so you can get tunnel vision. I think that's also a really common issue with that. And then you take a step back and realize that things are just very misproportioned. Uh, just kind of a common thing there. Let's go ahead and add in some eyes. I said I was going to add in eyes and then I never did. This is what happens. I get distracted. All right, let's add in some eyeballs. Boom, 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 boom. So exciting. <laughs> 
Oh man, I try to make uh, <laughs> I try to make sculpting exciting, but I don't know if adding some <laughs> creepy spheres here doesn't that look so creepy? I always think that looks so creepy, um, <laughs> especially here from the profile. I try to make this exciting, but um, it's it's not it's not always as easy as it looks. Now the size, the size of our facial features. I'm gonna go not too large. I don't want you know giant anime orbs in here. But I want probably uh, slightly larger than what we would anatomically expect. I like to bring a little bit more focus to my eyes if I can. If I can. The puns are going to be crazy. Please do not comment any puns below. When I used to stream all the time, uh, people would just comment puns all the time. It was just uh, part, of the, part of the channel. And the thing is with puns is I typically do them completely on accident and I don't realize that I'm doing them. They just kind of naturally happen somehow. I have something wrong with my brain that just forces my, my speech into the direction of puns no matter what. Or maybe it just has to do with like a lot of um, American English idioms that typically re uh, relate to like body parts. Like I said earlier, head in that direction. Um, that, that seems to be like a pretty common occurrence with idioms. I don't know if those are idioms. Is that correct? Eh, it doesn't matter. Idioms are like putting your foot in your mouth or, or something like that. Like some kind of common saying. My shadows are like really strong right now. I've been actually noticing this recently. I don't know if they changed some settings here. 0.85 I believe is correct for the default. Okay, I wonder if this default changed was on three. There are two main properties of lights that are really important, and that is the size of your light source and the distance. One of those is very complicated. I talk about that in my new lighting course. One involves something called the inverse square law, which is it has to do with the distance your light is from your uh, the thing that you're trying to light. It's a, like I said, it's a little complicated, but essentially the further away your light is, uh, flatter shadows or flatter lighting that you'll have on your figure and the closer your light is to your subject the um, more uh, Or less even your lighting will be and then the size of your light actually affects how sharp and soft your shadows are Which is also something very interesting. I like um, I, I really enjoy playing around with lighting a lot um, when I'm rendering a character. I typically uh, keep my default settings here in ZBrush. I like what I have here with my um, my personal clay material. I don't really use this one too often anymore, my um, more clay colored material. I used to use this exclusively uh, just because I liked the way that it looked, but I have found over time that it's just uh, a little bit softer on the eyes to go without the color over time. I don't know if you guys have ever like seen that illusion where you look at a color for a really long time, like uh, something that's bright red, and then you look at a white surface, and then you can kind of see blue, like the like residual effect of looking at that. That kind of happens uh, here a little bit for me when I'm looking at colored objects in ZBrush for a really long time. So even when I have something painted, if then I just toggle off all poly paint and go back to this, it's almost like... Um, which I think it has to do something with, um, I don't know, your rays or cones in your eyes, whichever, it doesn't really matter. But it has to do with um, those getting used so much that I think they get tired or something. It's, like I said, it doesn't matter, but you see the opposite color when you switch to um, a non-colored surface. It's a really interesting effect. Interesting, uh, and by interesting, I mean annoying. But um, yeah, let's continue on here. I'm going to add in a really basic, simple body here. Just kind of taking it easy on this one. After sculpt over, I think I think I deserve it. I deserve to take it easy, <laughs> or at least uh, chill for a little bit. And we're not really even chilling here. I say chill, but we are sculpting. So I love sculpting, though. Love me some sculpting. And if I didn't, I would have never been able to do a sculpt over. I, it's always funny to me. Oh no, that didn't have symmetry on it. Let me, uh, bleh, bleh, mirror that. 
It's always funny to me when I see uh, people, you know, t like trying to get into sculpting or get into art in general. And then they're like, yeah, but like, I don't, I don't want to practice. Like, I don't want to do that. That's not fun. And I'm like, what do you, wait, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, why do you want to be, <laughs> why do you want to be an artist? Why do you want to sculpt? Why do you want to draw? Why do you, like, you say you want to be an artist, but you don't want to, like, I, I mean, I know like studying can be pretty boring, but like in terms of uh, like doing what I'm right, doing what I'm doing right now, this is, this is practice, right? Um, I'm just kind of having some fun, experimenting with different shapes. This, this is practice. Just sculpting here is practice. And if you don't want to do that, like, why are you, <laughs> why are you trying to become an artist? Like, what is the, I don't understand the mindset there. All right, so we got a simple rib cage here. This is typically what I do for, for torsos. You can just do this with one single piece of geometry. I find it fun to kind of split it up a little bit. If you're having trouble understanding shapes or, or proportions, the roundness of the chest in here. You want to be really careful with your torso, though. It becomes too deep very quickly. Very easy to screw that up. For the hips, I'll just duplicate another sphere. That looks pretty good to me. Probably a bit too round, but no worries. And I'll probably create a couple more pieces here. Just some simple kind of shoulder transitions. You could consider these delts or deltoids. I think that's kind of a bad idea to like mentally put yourself in that state. This is representing a lot of form here for the shoulder girdle but it acts as a transitional piece to go from the rib cage into the arm. So um, you don't wanna, you know, it's nice to know anatomy uh, for sure, right? <laughs> it can be very helpful. It is a tool like uh, anything else though, just like a brush. You don't need it. It's not a necessity. It is very helpful though. I will also say that it can be a little dangerous sometimes to give some some things a concrete name like saying deltoid for this piece here when it is very much not a deltoid it is a deltoidal kind of shape or transition but definitely not a deltoid or like so like for this i mean this is just going to be my upper arm piece that is what this is going to represent and it's going to be really simple here at first it's just a sphere that I'm stretching out to roughly about here, roughly about the belly button. And then I'll just duplicate out another one. And this is the forearm or lower arm, whatever you wanna call it. This will taper down into that shape. Whenever you do your arms, make sure that you have them uh, either straight down or back a little bit. Always feels very awkward in a neutral state when you have your arms forward a little bit. That is another one of those common mistakes that I see people do very, very often. So we're getting some cool gesture here with the uh, the torso. I'm liking some of that. I'll probably merge those together here very soon. I mean, I could do it right now. It really doesn't matter because I'm going to be cleaning up and simplifying that. Uh, let's see here. Let's add a little bit more form around the, the ribs. Back into here. We'll transition that later. Let's just get a quick little separative line down the middle. I just like to split things here for the torso. Although I'll remove most of this from the front and keep a little bit here in the back, especially around the pillars of the back and the uh, traps or trapezius. I just like to be a little bit rough here during this stage. I'm not super worried about specifics. Just trying to get to a nice kind of basic shape here for the uh, the chest. Your clavicles actually go back here pretty far if you're looking at them from the top. One fun thing that uh, is really interesting about the clavicles. Hey, welcome to welcome to clavicle hour. Uh, one fun thing about clavicles is they actually spin and rotate. They like they spin like uh, like this direction around here, right? Uh, that is super interesting, right? Isn't that fun? <laughs> so the way they found this out 
it happens when you raise your arm up past a certain point. It has to do with the uh, the rhythm. I can't remember the name of this rhythm, uh, but when you raise your arm up to here, this is pretty much your entire arm making this rotation. But once you get above uh, roughly a 90 degree kind of parallel with the ground plane angle, your entire shoulder girdle starts to activate and uh, your clavicle spin, your scapula rotates up as well. So this angle uh, changes up here. A lot of stuff happens. And the way they found this out about the uh, clavicles is, <laughs> is a little disturbing, but they, uh, they stuck a needle in people's clavicles, just like a needle right in there, real nasty, right? And then they had people rotate their arms. And as they did so, the needle would raise up and you could kind of measure the angle of how much that would spin. Isn't that crazy? You can, you can find some medical images of that online somewhere, I'm sure. Um, it's been a, I, I forget where I learned that, but it's just so, so crazy. <laughs> so I have a lot of uh, really kind of rough and nasty shapes going on here. I want to get a bit more form here for the armpit. I should have done this before I uh, combined this piece, but it really doesn't matter uh, because, you know, we can always take the time to go back and correct and make some changes. Nothing is ever final here. Just simplifying my geometry now. This uh, rib cage plane is way too strong through here. I want to get a bit more volume right through here. We'll figure out the legs here in a moment. Get that hip. Get a little bit more of a lat here. Your latissimus dorsi. The backs are complicated. There's a lot going on with backs and, and uh, the front of your, your torso as well. Backs in particular though, they're fun. I don't want this, uh, you know, this is not an anatomical study by any means, uh, but I want things to be like in the general place of where we would expect certain anatomical forms. So like for instance, you would expect the back to be a little bit wider than the front portion of the torso right around here because of the latissimus muscles. And those actually kind of connect up here. And then you have like your terrace muscles around here as well. And a bunch of other, like this is all kind of latching onto the humerus for the arm. Like I said, anatomy can be helpful. This is not an anatomical study. That is not the uh, purpose of our sculpting here. We're just trying to kind of get things in the general place right now and have it be acceptable, uh, essentially. Uh, if I wanted to go for perfect anatomical accuracy, we could spend a long time doing that. I definitely need to break out some anatomy books, get a lot of reference. But at least for now, we're just kind of keeping things chill, trying to make something visually interesting. Make something cool. Making something cool is our goal for this one. So we're getting a little bit kind of messy and complicated back here. Back here. <laughs> uh, kill me. So uh, what we'll do is simplify this here very soon. But let's just keep it messy as it is right now. And uh, we'll create some quick legs. Some quick legums. Guess how I'm gonna make a leg. It's a sphere. I'm, I'm using a sphere to make the leg. So uh, I will typically take the upper portion of the leg. I will round it out more in the front, a little bit flatter in the back. Have some nice contrast there. We typically have some roundness there. Uh, and then back here for the butt, we'll just uh, kind of combine this shape. Because, I mean, that's, that's how it works. <laughs> Is that how it works anatomically? Um, not quite like that though, right? We can kind of combine those up. Something like that is fine for now. Like I said, it's fine to keep things messy in the, uh, the early stages. It really doesn't matter too much. Because you can always change it later. And then start transitioning into a lower leg. So our proportions definitely need some tweaking here. I think our uh, torso, actually our body in general is a little bit small in comparison to our head. Like I said, I like to make my heads a little bit large at first to make sure I'm heading 
in a good direction. But after a while, you'll have to proportionally kind of get things in the right place. This is actually kind of heading away from what I wanted to kind of focus on. I wanted to focus on the face uh, more than anything for this. So I think we'll probably head back up there and kind of abandon a lot of this. But I at least wanted to uh, talk about this a little and kind of show you guys some of the process here since we're sculpting in real time. And uh, it's not something that I often get to do or haven't done in a little while. I've definitely talked about this process, shown all this stuff on my channel before and on live streams in the past. But like I said, it's been a while. And I know we got a lot of new people here, especially after Sculptober. Um, so welcome, new people, if you are interested in my sculpting process. Here you go. Here's some more free knowledge for you. Dropping that knowledge. Cool, cool, cool. All right, we could refine that a little bit more, but let's head up to the face. Talk about faces for a little bit. We'll keep the uh, body on. We'll probably refine the arms a little bit more. I want those legs off because they're kind of visually in the way. All right, let's see here. Let's just take a look at some extreme angles. See what we're working with. The head is heading into, I know I said it again, heading into a good direction. I'm really liking that major shape there for the silhouette. Here's our bit alfalfa. So I think we'll just change that. And probably scale them down a bit later as well. Whoops. Maybe right now. Let's see. That feels a, a lot nicer. Okay. Uh, let's continue on through here. Not liking that silhouette. Not liking that angle change. Let's lessen that. Make it straighter. Clean it up. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Check out that back and the neck. Combine those together. So I pretty much just want this to be a bust. I know we looked at a lot of stuff here for the body, but I like to have it um, at least to an extent in case I want to show a bit more for the final image of the body here, uh, which is nice. But for the most part, we're just going to be focusing on the face. I know I showed off some other stuff with legs. Uh, but, you know, we can just, we can totally just delete these. These were done in, you know, 30 seconds, and they're not even proportionally accurate to the rest of the figure. Uh, so we got the arms there. Separate those. Let me make sure that's a good polygroup. Polygroups can trick you sometimes. They'll be the same color, and it's hard to tell if uh, if you've actually created a new group or not. All right, let's kind of check out some of the shape here in the arm just to refine it ever so slightly. I want to push into a little bit of a better, uh, more refined shape simply because we've done that here with the chest and it feels a bit awkward when you have something so unrefined next to something that is a bit more refined. So I'll just uh, cut in a couple planes here really quick. I see a lot of people sculpt these like really sharp elbows back here on an arm when it's straight. If you it, put your arm down at your side, <laughs> you don't you don't really have too much of an elbow to speak of when your arm is straight. It should be pretty flat through here. I am exaggerating this right now on purpose to uh, start transitioning this a little bit better. I like to exaggerate. Uh, but just be really careful that if you're going to have a pose where your arms are flat, you're not going to have a super strong or sharp elbow. Just be aware of that. That is going to be all for this part. I will be continuing on this in a future video. If you guys enjoy the more chill and real-time format, let me know and we can maybe make this a regular thing. Check out the links in the description for things like my brushes and courses, a new course on lighting and rendering, which I know is something that a lot of people have been asking about for a very, very long time, and click that subscribe button if you are new around here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one where we'll continue right where we left off. Until then, though, you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next part.